Does it show on your end? Sorry. Oh, now it is. Now you're good. All right, we're gonna do this all over again, everyone. No, we're not. That wouldn't be fun for any of you. Um, I'm just gonna go back and share our data. Um, so again, wanna uh, provide this data for all the residents who aren't watching this um, live, which is Fresno County as of yesterday has 1,944 COVID cases. Uh, 37 individuals have passed away. 211 have been hospitalized, 575 are recovered, um, and it currently being monitored is 1,337. Um, this is a graph that is showcasing the trending in our area in terms of COVID activity, and you can see those spikes that we are gonna watch very closely as we monitor the coming weeks as, as businesses start unsheltering in place. This is another graph looking at the comorbidities and race um, and demographics for uh, Fresno County. Um, want to let everyone know the current statistics in terms of COVID activity that at San Joaquin Gardens, we have zero positive cases as of today and zero persons under investigation. Cumulatively uh, for San Joaquin Gardens to date, we've had two positive cases, both have since fully recovered and we have had 53 persons under investigation for individuals being tested for COVID. Again, a reminder of our COVID-19 symptoms. A reminder as to the proper wa mask wearing guidelines and that to properly wear a mask, you must cover your nose and mouth. Um, and so why do you want to wear a mask? Uh, thank you to Dennis for finding this graphic. I really like it. Um, you're wearing your mask to protect yourself and others. So at the top of your screen, you can see uh, for COVID-19 carrier, so somebody that, that uh, isn't aware that they're you know, positive for COVID-19, they're without a mask and they're talking to a healthy person without a mask. Obviously the risk of spread there is very high. I'm wearing a mask as a healthy person to protect myself as I go through society. And I begin talking with somebody who is a COVID-19 carrier and does not have a mask. That risk of spread is still moderately high. If the COVID-19 carrier is wearing their mask and they go out and about and they're interacting with a healthy person, that risk of spread is low. But what is the best case scenario? Which is somebody is a COVID-19 carrier, they are wearing a mask, they, they are doing their due diligence to protect themselves and society. At this point, they most likely don't even realize they have COVID-19, but they are a carrier they are wearing their mask, doing their good job to protect themselves and society, and they interact with another person who is also doing their due diligence as a great citizen and protecting themselves by wearing a mask. And that COVID-19 carrier and that healthy person are interacting both wearing masks and that risk of spread is very low. So that, my friends, is why it is so important for all of us to take wearing masks so seriously because if only 80% of us are wearing our masks, we still have that high risk of, it, of, of spread if that, if that person is, that is a COVID-19 carrier is without a mask. And again, people may not know they're a COVID-19 carrier. That is what is so uh, insidious about this disease. So it is so important that we all wear masks to protect ourselves and each other. That in is why we wanted to be a part of a community uh, here at San Joaquin Gardens because we wanted to have that sense of community and this is what you can do to protect your community. Um, again, um, you know, all the studies are showing that, that uh, the way pandemics end is, is typically by society demanding um, action and, and, and citizens saying, we, we are tired of talking about this. We are tired of these restrictions. We want to go back to normal, but we really can't go back to normal at all. We can regain some sort of semblancy of normal, but really we have to remain vigilant as citizen to protect the public health. And how do we do that? Wearing masks like we just talked about, effective physical distancing um, with those six feet markers, being vigilant about hand washing, face touching, um, and really being a, a reminder to others to be a good citizen and practice all of those safety practices as well. 
So again, washing hands is still highly, highly recommended. Um, the CDC recommends that we wash hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. Most of us know that we sing happy birthday twice, um, and that will get you that full 20 seconds. Um, you and wash your hands before you eat, before you use the restroom, before you blow your nose, after coughing and sneezing, and really after being around anyone else that you might have touched or, or obviously been in their vicinity. So um, really, uh, we want to see here everybody singing happy birthday, and there's always somebody having a birthday here at San Joaquin Gardens, and uh, we'll be uh, singing to them each and every time we all wash our hands. And again, um, the best uh, thing that we can do is to stay home when sick. So if anybody is symptomatic, please let our, our nursing team know. Um, and then obviously when you are out and about, that physical distancing is so, so important because of those respiratory droplets that are gonna go out from a sick person when they sneeze or speak or cough. Um, and, and if you're within that six foot radius, um, you know, and remember six feet is quite a big distance, um, but being back from them by six feet will really protect you um, because the main mode of transmission for this disease is people breathing in those droplets. So six feet apart is our new normal. We have to give air hugs and, and really be vigilant about that six feet spacing. And you're going to see lots of of new uh, signage on display around campus about this. Don't forget to tell us if um, you are being tested for COVID um, or if you are showing symptoms, please let Valerie or Carol know. Again, for California overall and for Fresno County uh, specifically, we are in stage two of the reopening process. Um, and that's where retailers are allowed to reopen um, and they're, they're looking at reopening all of these venues. Stage three will be when schools and, and, and movie theaters and some of those uh, higher volume spaces are allowed to reopen. So uh, phase two for us uh, looks like what we're currently enjoying, which is meal pickup started today. So uh, meal pickup, continuing to shelter in place. Um, our phase three will include uh, the gym and salon opening as well as allowing for some gatherings. So we're currently in phase two, but looking at entering phase three. Um, so again, as we know, the shelter in place restrictions for Fresno County and really throughout California are starting to ease. Many businesses are reopening reopening, but those uh, are modified services and, and different standards for infection control within um, these standards. Our local Fresno County is doing a really great job. Our, our Fresno County Public Health is, is doing a great job in terms of, of tracking um, businesses as they open, making businesses submit plans to them so that they can make sure that these infection control guidelines are in place. In addition to our county ordinance, we want to remind everybody that we're also licensed by the Department of Social Services, or DSS, the California Department of Public Health, known as CDPH, Center for Disease Control, CDC, and the Fresno County Department of Public Health, the FCDPH. So that's a lot of acronyms, a lot of oversight, but I, I, that should give you some comfort to know that there's a lot of regulatory bodies that we are answering to, so we can really make sure that we are doing our due diligence to protect all of our residents and reopen in a safe manner. So what does that mean for all of us here at San Joaquin Gardens? So our EDIC uh, committee, uh, EDICT, um, is looking at working with Human Good and we're designing uh, the reopening plans. So for dining, we've gone to pick up uh, meals starting today, uh, June 4th. For activities, we are waiting for DSS approval, which is expected next week. So uh, once we get that approval to allow gatherings and some activities to resume on campus, we are planning for that now and we'll have more information about what that will look like. For visitation to our campus, again, DSS approval is expected soon, but that will be modified. It won't be like we're used to in terms of just the, the gates being open and anybody coming and going. It's, it's not going to be like that until post-COVID. I had a resident call me the other day and just say, you know, are we going to keep that screening tent up? you know, now that the shelter in place guidelines are, are loosening. And my answer was, we're gonna keep that screening tent up 
pretty much through the duration of COVID. So until we are fully through COVID, we are going to have that, that tent man because that really is our best protection so that we can know who is on our campus, for what duration, what their symptoms are, and in, in, in asking all of those good questions. Um, for our gym, uh, we are hoping for DSS approval next week as well. Um, we, we don't know what will be on the, the new DSS guidelines, but we are, are hoping that that will be on there. For the pool, uh, we're waiting right now on Fresno County to release restrictions. We are considered to have a community pool, much like an HOA would have a community pool. Um, the other regulatory bodies do not have any um, restrictions currently for the pool. So the only restriction that is over us right now is Fresno County. So we have reached out to them um, to see if they can release the pool so that we could allow some um, you know, water aerobics or, or, or residents to swim. Um, so we will get back to you about that. Um, our good news of the day is that so for the salon, um, I, I put CDS, that's meant to say CDC. The CDC has approved salons to reopen in senior living communities. Um, DSS followed suit. We have submitted our plan, our proposed plan to Fresno County and are awaiting their approval. So therefore we are hoping to open our salon next week. So uh, stay tuned for more information by our Monday Zoom call. We are hoping and praying that we will have um, a reopening guidelines for you in place in terms of um, starting to take appointments uh, in our salon here on campus. So um, by our next Zoom call, we're hoping to have um, a grand reopening date for our salon. Um, the TSJG committees, um, we're going to be reaching out to each of these committee members to talk through um, uh, how we are going to recreate our new uh, normal. So uh, for those um, uh, listed uh, dining, the Fun Band Singers Country Store, et cetera, um, how, do, has, how does that committee function? How does that activity take place during this time? So, you know, uh, dining committee is a great example. They used to meet in the large conference room. That's a pretty small venue for that large group. You know, um, even if, if DSS allows gathering, um, it might be best to continue via Zoom. So what I'm anticipating is there's gonna be a combination of, of continued Zoom activity as well as some in-person activity. Um, you know, weights and balance, I, I'm assuming everybody is itching to get back to that, right? Um, and so that would be the best use of our holiday theater space versus hosting the dining committee. So we're going to kind of talk through each chair and, and with our activity team, what's the most important to utilize our physical space, especially understanding that the, the um, best venues we have to offer with the best infection control would be outdoors, or in the holiday theater because the size of the holiday theater, the volume of the room, the amount of airspace that's there, that's going to be the best place for us to host activities because it will have the least amount of potential um, for spread, uh, community spread in terms of COVID. So um, what we will look at, basically at this point, we're going to be working with all of these committee chairs, working with the activity team, and, and asking them to put pen to paper with us to draw out a plan of what this committee and or activity will look like as we reopen TSJG. Um, so the edict uh, uh, team will be working with the committee chairs and the activity team. Um, they, the, each committee and activity will put a proposal to the edict for what the safe reopening will look like. A template will be provided to them. Uh, the edict, uh, team, which is residents and myself and a few other directors, will provide guidance and support and, and resources, as well as staggering a timeline. We can't rush to open everything at once. You know, we will stagger this and open uh, one thing at a time to make sure we learn lessons about how we can do this better moving forward. Um, most of us have never lived through a pandemic and or led a community through a pandemic, so it's going to be really important for us to continue to fine tune our efforts to keep this community as safe as possible while allowing some normalcy to return. Um, 
all of the activities and common spaces uh, that reopen um, uh, will be communicated to everyone via these Zoom calls as well as Touchtown and Garden News. So you'll know in advance as things start to come back online. And then as a reminder to everyone, we will monitor everything and determine if any of these areas must cease activity for the safety of community. And, and what that really means is if we have um, COVID activity on our campus, uh, we will stop a lot of these um, activities and gatherings, et cetera, um, for the safety of, of everyone, and then resume once a time period has lapsed. So again, it's not gonna be a, a stop start. I equate it to, um, you know, COVID is still here. And uh, the best analogy I've heard is we are driving through uh, an ice storm, there's ice on the road, and you have to uh, brake slowly and multiple times. You don't just slam on the brake, you don't just stop altogether, but we're gonna you know, stop and start a lot as we go through this time together um, for the safety of everyone. I uh, want to remind everyone we had uh, some instances as of late where uh, we weren't sure that all residents were fully aware of, of what to do in a medical emergency. want to uh, hearken everyone back to their um, uh, resident reference binder, and uh, which has emergency information in it. But in all emergencies, if it's a true emergency, your first step is to call 911. We don't want you calling the concierge, calling security, calling anybody else. Call 911, get those folks on the road here. Press your pendant, um, pull your pull cord. So your pendant, everybody knows, and hopefully folks are wearing them right now. Um, you press that and that will alert our nursing team. Um, your pull cord in your bathrooms will also alert our nursing team. And, um, you know, for you, Again, leaving your door open if possible, especially if 911 is going to get there before us. So again, um, the pull cord uh, looks like what's on your screen on the right hand side. Your pendant is on the left hand side. Um, so push that pendant, pull that pull cord. You can call the security phone number or the nursing phone number, um, but you know definitely uh, alert us if there's any sort of emergency. Uh, what's going on in our dining department? Um, again, as all of you know, we moved to phase two, which reopened and allowed meal pickup. It's been organized by last name to reduce congestion. Um, I think our decals didn't arrive on time. Um, FedEx uh, was supposed to have been here last night with the decals for the floor and they didn't make it in time. Um, so hopefully those decals arrive today, but there'll be directional arrows on the floor. Um, lots of standing decals. We ask that you wear your masks and use your hand sanitizer um, as you enter to pick up your meal. As a reminder, we got a lot of phone calls today saying it's too hot and um, we need transportation. Right now, we don't have an approved transportation policy um, that is approved for us to operate within a COVID environment. So until we have that, um, there, we just want to remind folks that we can deliver your meals. So you're not required to pick them up. Please call us if you'd like your meals to be delivered and we'll be glad to do that for you. So again, uh, once our directional arrows and our standing um, in place arrows or, or indicators uh, will be placed so that there is a flow for pickup both in the Monte Carlo for entrance and exit as well as the um, bistro in the Piazza building. Um, again, uh, we, we didn't hear from a lot of you, so today was kind of our trial run, but uh, we really wanna make sure that you know if you want your meal delivered, call us at 430-8228, just as if you were gonna place an alternative menu order um, so that we can make sure that we provide that delivery service to you. And um, all of you should have received this already, but when, uh, when and where you pick up is determined by your last name. If anybody is not aware of that, here is the indicators. And again, a reminder to stay six feet apart when standing in line to pick up your meals and to wear your masks. Um, happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. It's gonna be here before we know it. So our menu will be tri-tip, chicken, apple sausage, and barbecue shrimp. A gratin potato, broccolini and mushrooms, ham and corn chowder, a wedge salad and chocolate mousse cake 
with a bourbon sauce. I believe this is the lunch menu for that day. Anna, are you on? Is this lunch or dinner? Hello. Yes, I'm actually here with um, Chef. So is, is that the menu for lunch or dinner on Father's Day? Oh, I'm sorry, that is for lunch. Thank you. Thank you. So um, as you see on your screen, that is your lunch menu for Father's Day. Um, and I believe some residents asked for champagne because they didn't want to be outdone by the Mother's Day. So that will be delivered <laughs> as well. But um, a happy Father's Day coming on June 21st. Also, um, we are bringing back our parade. The Mother's Day parade was such a hit that we will be having a Father's Day parade. So we will enc encourage your family members to decorate their vehicles, make, sign my make signs, honk their horns, and come on uh, Father's Day between 10 and 3 by appointment only. Um, you can RSVP at our Connect line, which is 430-8216. Everybody will check in at the screening tent and all guests will remain in their vehicles at all times. Um, if they're dropping off gifts, they can also do that at the screening tent. So we'd ask that you all stay on the sidewalk so nobody um, gets hurt during the parade, but we look forward to hosting our second parade in the last few months. So we're getting good at these things. Wednesday, June 10th is National Herbs and Spices Day. Uh, spices were one of the things that Columbus was in search of when he set sail for India. He ended up in the Caribbean, and, and maybe that's why we add spices to our fruit. So I'm assuming our, we're not just delivering spices. Are we delivering spices, Anna? Sorry. No, no, we will be delivering, um, yeah, and it'll probably be fruit, so it's a little bit more refreshing with our okay. own spice. Um, concoction and then we'll have something to tell you what that spice is. So. Okay, wonderful. So we will have some fruit and spices being delivered Wednesday, June 10th. That would have been really not fun to just get a bag of oregano handed to you. So I'm glad we'll have something more exciting than that. So National Herbs and Spices Day. I'm sure that um, Jim will remind us at the end of the call that tomorrow is donut day, I believe. So we'll see if we can make some, some donuts if you're around here tomorrow. Uh, building and grounds, uh, we uh, heard your request, I think it was yesterday, uh, for carport cleaning. So Tuscan and Piazza carports are being cleaned today. Sequoia carports will be cleaned tomorrow. So ask and ye shall receive. Uh, Milano garage cleaning, Monday, June 8th, the east half of the garage will be cleaned. And Tuesday, June 9th, the west half of the garage will be cleaned. Cleaning will be taking place from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., so please move your vehicles accordingly. Wanted to let you know that Piazza Commons will be turned into a break room temporarily because of COVID. So we're required by the state of California to provide a break room with the maximum ability for social distancing during this time. As most of our break rooms only allow for one to two team members in them, um, because of the six foot physical distancing rules, we had to look for a larger space. Uh, we chose Piazza Commons because of its central location and volume of space. Uh, right now we're using the Holiday Theater, so we're gonna um, stop using that, clean that, get that ready in anticipation that we will be resuming resident activity um, and we'll be mostly utilizing the Holiday Theater for resident activity because of the um, large uh, entrance and the ability to have a different entrance and exit um, for infection control purposes, as well as a large volume of space um, to allow for the maximum participation of residents during uh, the requirement for physical distancing. So uh, for the next several months, uh, our Piazza Commons will become a break room for the team members. We'll see how that works out. If we need to make changes to that, we can in the future but we um, appreciate your understanding of the requirement to provide a break room that allows for social distancing um, or physical distancing during this time of COVID. Um, this is funny. Uh, again, yesterday on our, our call with the residents, I was asked about the HVAC HEPA filter and went to Brian after that call. Turns out San Joaquin Gardens is actually piloting 
the HEPA filters. Um, so we will be piloting a project utilizing a new filter technology in our village. This new HEPA filter is supposed to be effective against the spread of airborne viruses. So we're piloting that for um, all of human good and we'll report back um, on that to you all as we learn more about this program. Um, Sequoia is, has uh, the new painted walls. We've uh, rehung the artwork, uh, added new sconces, et cetera. So I wanted to showcase uh, how Speranza looks right now. Again, these are the new carpet tiles so that if there is a stain, we can uh, replace uh, that easily. And I believe um, tomorrow or early next week, um, we are finishing the tiling for where the um, salad bar was going to go and the room will be fully complete at that time. In lifestyle enrichment, wanted to let you know that in June, uh, we have some June themed puzzles, some cranium crunch packets that will have word searches, Sudoku, crossword public puzzles, and much more. So uh, look for those in your message boxes. In our grove, our residents have been creating mini aquariums and also some Father's Day inspired origami um, and wanted to showcase those for you all. Oh, that's really neat. Um, we have recorded uh, the resident council meeting uh, from yesterday, and that will be aired on the first Thursday of every month at 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. So that will be aired on Touchtown at 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. the first Thursday of the month, which I believe is today. So um, we will start recording the resident council meeting and airing it on Touchtown uh, the Thursday thereafter. Uh, a reminder to everyone that there is no poop fairy at the terraces at San Joaquin Gardens. So if your dog poops, you must scoop. Um, so please clean up after your dogs and be a good neighbor. A big happy birthday today to Faye Lowe's, tomorrow to Edna Gossett and Mary La Follette. So happy birthday to our three newest June babies. Again, as a reminder, a piece of trivia that June has the least amount of, birth, amount of birthdays at the terraces with only 13 birthdays in the month of June. But please call up these June babies and wish them a very happy birthday. You can sing them as the song while you wash your hands. That would be killing two birds with one stone. Uh, we wanna remind uh, everyone that we are calling all resident roving reporters. We want you to please continue to send your articles, cartoons, and musings to us for usage in this Zoom call, our weekly newsletter, and Touchtown. We need fun stuff, we need funny stuff, and we need things that'll make us say, hmm. Feel free to share your own writings. I mean, does anybody want to write an ode to me, perhaps? Or anything else creative that you think others might enjoy. Now is the time because we have a lot of it. So uh, put your writing reporting cap on and share the love with all of us here at TSJG. We'd love to see your creative writings, et cetera. We appreciate all of the content that is being shared. Even if we aren't using it directly, we read it all and it provides us additional insight into this pandemic and beyond. So again, calling all resident roving reporters, anything that you think might be of interest, send it my way and we will use it in one of our communication vehicles. And we thank you to all of our reporters who have been sending us great stuff to date. On that note, uh, a, one of our roving reporters uh, sent an article to me that I thought was of interest. And the article was titled, How to be Grateful to Boost Mental Health and Cope with Stress. So how to be grateful to boost mental health and cope with stress. So the first uh, idea was to prepare yourself. Spend time in nature, listen to music, slow down and pay attention to your surroundings. Number two was keep a gratitude journal. Write down things you are grateful for each day. Number three was give back. Find ways to use your strengths and your talents to help others. Number four, think about the bad. Recalling your worst times can make you grateful you made it through. 
grateful for what you learned in the process and how it made you stronger. Number five, go through the motions. Gratitude is an attitude, not a feeling that can be easily willed. But by performing grateful motions, you will be able to trigger real gratitude. So smile, say thank you, but act with that heart of gratitude. Watch your language. Um, using thankful words like gifts, blessings, fortune, and abundance. Um, less grateful people are preoccupied with burdens, curses, deprivations, and complaints, and their words reflect this focus. So use grateful words. Write a letter. It feels good to make someone else feel good. Research shows that even if you don't send the letter, you will benefit because you have strengthened the brain's gratitude circuitry and have activated the region of the brain that produces dopamine. And number eight, finally, focus on the future. Think of the reunions. Imagine how good it will feel to uh, eat at your favorite restaurant or get back to your favorite hobby. So uh, thank you to uh, Lane Johnson for sending us the article, How to Be Grateful to Boost Mental Health and Cope with Stress. The Hunt for the Gnome. So again, if you see the gnome, call the connect line and tell them where you saw him and have your name placed in the raffle. Have fun and happy hunting. The gnome will be relocated every Friday. So tomorrow morning, we will relocate the gnome. Call in your sightings of the gnome by 5 p.m. each Wednesday night. The winner will be drawn live on Thursday during the neighborhood Zoom call. So Dennis, are you ready to draw? I am. All right, and who is our lucky winner? All right, this time we're drawing from a hat. Okay. Am I visible to everyone? Yes. All right. Uh, there's our winner. Let's see who it is. Pat Parnell. Congratulations to Pat winner. Parnell. Our winner for the hunt for the gnome, we have two cookies that will be put in your message box and or you can call the concierge uh, to come and get it. But we are happy to give you your own very own gnome cookie for winning the prize. And with that, we will go ahead and stop sharing our screen and stop recording and open it up to questions and comments. Thank you everyone for your attention. And we hope you learned a little something today at TSJG.